My name is Steve Wolf, and I have one of the most exciting jobs in the world. My job is to light people on fire, to crash cars, to blow up buildings, and throw people off roofs. But when I'm doing that, I need to make sure two things. I need to make sure nobody gets hurt. Right. That's actually both things. Nobody gets hurt, nobody gets hurt. So I use a lot of science in my work, and I use a lot of safety in my work. And what I wanted to do today is just show you some of the ways that I use science and safety to make movie stunts and special effects. A few years ago, I got to work with uh, a really old actor. I see some of you pr probably remember him, a guy named Tom Cruise. And I set up a lot of stunts for him. And one of the things he says, you know, he's very healthy. Didn't want to be around any smoke. So when we had to make a room full of smoke for him to have a conversation with his wife in a smoky restaurant, we had to figure out how do we make it look like we're in a room full of smoke, but not have any smoke. And we use uh, smoke machines to do that. And smoke machine's really simple. It just works off the principle of three states of matter, right? We've got solids, liquids, and gases. And very often, the only difference as to whether something is solid, liquid, or gas is how much heat is in it. Like if you take an ice cube, you add some heat, you turn it from a solid to a liquid, you add more heat to it, you turn it into a gas called steam. Smoke machines work the same way. They just add heat to a liquid to turn the liquid into a gas. So if I take a cup like that, I heat that up, doesn't take very much, and I just put a teeny little drop. I put less than a drop of liquid in there. And look at all the smoke you can make. So we did some math because I was really curious to know how much smoke you get from how much smoke fluid, right? Because we, we need to know, well, I'm running this machine for 12 hours. How many gallons of fluid am I going to need? It, well, it turns out that a gallon of smoke fluid is probably going to last you years. Because when you take a drop of liquid and you add enough heat to it to separate the molecules to create a gas, the expansion that we got, 1.3 billion times the volume. So that means if we took the 600 people in here, right now you look like a solid, you know, just kind of vibrating in place. If we turned you into a gas, separated you all out, you wouldn't be able to see each other. You'd occupy about 17,000 square miles. So the expansion is, is, is phenomenal. I thought that was way cool. Now, you guys, can you smell the smoke at all? All right, so when we're working with chemicals, obviously safety is really important. We need to know that the chemicals we're working with won't hurt us. So I have the five in rule. It says if you're in contact with a, something, if you're inhaling it, if you're ingesting it or injecting it, you need to read the in instructions, right? Okay, so the instructions, just make sure the contents of this vessel are safe for human inhalation. What does that mean? Safe to breathe. Long-term exposure may cause hair loss. I don't believe that, come on. We've been doing this forever, right? I mean, all right, so you've, you've heard of this expression about smoke. It says where there's smoke, there's fire. I have to make fire just about every day I go to work. I have to probably make fire seven or eight times a week. Actually, I have to make fire so often I have my own recipe for it. Just like if I'm making a cake, I'd have to have butter and flour, sugar, eggs. Well, when I'm making fire, I have to have four ingredients also. I have to have fuel, I have to have oxygen, I have to have heat, and you have to have a chemical reaction. If you bring together fuel, oxygen, heat, and a chemical reaction, you get fire, right? So fuel is anything that burns. Oxygen is a gas that we need to stay alive. Heat is a form of energy. And a chemical reaction is when we're taking the elements of two or more substances, and we rearrange them and make something new. Just like if I took uh, the elements CAT, that would probably be a molecule that we call a cat. And if I rearranged it and had ACT, it's the same ingredients, but now I have an act. And then I could go on the road. That would be more exciting. So, that's so chemical reactions, we're just rearranging stuff to make something new. Now, when I make a house on fire in a movie, I don't use a real house because a real house will burn down in about 20 minutes. When I did uh, A Time to Kill, uh, I had to have that house on fire for two and a half weeks. So the house can't burn down. So we have to make the house out of materials that are non-flammable. An example would be metal, right? Good, good choice. So the house isn't really burning. What's really burning is this hydrocarbon fuel. What do you think the two types of atoms are that make up a hydrocarbon? Ooh, you guys got up early, huh? Awesome. All right, so, so we can turn on our house here. There we go. Now, don't be scared, all right? It's not a real fire. It's not even real fire. It's movie fire, right? The difference between real fire and movie fire, of course, is that with um, movie fire, it takes direction, just like an actor would, right? So we can take it out, put it back in. And we can direct it to, like, if we don't want any fire downstairs, I could just say, hey, why don't you go head upstairs? 
go upstairs now. Thank you. Good. Now, you, you're looking a little f weird and you're kind of close to me, so it would be really great if you could just go over there with him. Oh, I'm, ju I'm just trying to get this fire to go over there. I would need you to go to your left. Yeah, not there. Le you went the wrong way. Told you. You got to learn your left and right. I want you to go over there, okay? Thank you. Good. All right. Now, you are perfect, but we're not ready for you yet, so I just need you to wait in the bottle. Thank you. Good. Excellent. All right. Now, you guys know I'm not really, you know, telling the fire what to do. Well, I am, right? But it's not moving around because of anything I said. Why is it moving around? Yeah, because I'm, I'm controlling it by using these valves back here. So a valve is a simple mechanical device that controls the flow of a fluid. Do you know what a fluid is? I'll give you a hint. Two out of the three states of matter are fluids. Solids aren't one of them. Liquids and gas. So anything that takes the shape of the container that you put it into is called a fluid. But you know what this is? Yeah, this is actually evidence that we had a chemical reaction here, and this material is called carbon. Right? You know what this could do to you? Kill you? Who says kill you? Absolutely right. 10,000 pounds of carbon falls on your head, boom, you're dead, just like that. But other than that, this stuff really won't hurt you at all, maybe just gets you a little bit dirty. And one of the neat secrets about carbon is that there's about 15 pounds of carbon in your body. Not just you, actually, I wasn't singling you out, but each one of you in here has between 10 and 15 pounds of carbon. Now, you know that all things reflect light at different angles, right? So if you want to see the carbon and you just loosen up the skin on the back of your left hand and then just stretch it a little bit, and if you hold it up to the, to the light at an angle of uh, 17 degrees, is the refraction index on that? Yeah, you still can't see the carbon because the carbon's tied up with the, the other atoms that make the proteins of your body. So you can't see that. But and why do you think we set houses on fire in movies? Yeah, it's fun, right? Probably not everyone in here would like seeing a movie for two hours about a house on fire the way I would, but some of us would. But you know what? If we just have a house on fire, right, people aren't going to watch it for very long. You have to have some drama. Maybe you have to have someone stuck in the house. They're trying to get out. They can't get out. There's too much fire. They run upstairs, but they still can't get out. So now they're struggling to find a way out, and they come out on the roof. And now what happens? They're safe, right? Yeah, because the roof is up here. Fire's down there. Everything's good. The fire, what? Yeah, the fire and the smoke start to come up, and pretty soon what? Fire all around, and what are they going to do to get away? It's, come on, it's an action movie. Ah! They're going to jump off the roof, right? To get away. Now, there's a secret to jumping off roofs. The secret is, it doesn't really matter if the roof is one foot tall, if the roof is 500 feet tall. All that the stunt person has to do, let me show you my secret here. All that the stunt person has to do is take one step and what does the work of getting them to the ground? Shh, that's my secret. Gravity. See, I go to work, I take one step. Gravity does all the work. But I get to keep all the money. Pretty good deal. I'm getting paid for work that gravity does, right? And to make it even easier now, I know some of you think, oh, well, that's not so easy, falling 500 feet. I'm not sure I'd want to do that for a living. Is there anyone who here who would not want to go to work, fall 500 feet, get your money, go home? No, OK. Why, you think, it's, think that's dangerous? Yeah, some people think that's dangerous. I'll tell you what, in, uh, this is my 26th year setting up stunts. Not once have I ever seen anyone get hurt falling. I've seen some people get killed landing. You know, that's a completely different part of the stunt, right? As long as you're falling, you're safe, right? It's the sudden stop at the bottom that's a problem. So we need to make sure when we have a person up in the air, we always have something nice and soft underneath them. And you know what's nice and soft that I can find everywhere on Earth? Air. So I get a giant bag about the size of this room. I fill it up with air. And because air is a solid, liquid, or gas? Gas. And one of the properties of gases is that gases are compressible. That means that if I land on a giant bag full of air, it compresses like a big spring. It's landing uh, like landing on a giant marshmallow. So look at this. You've got gravity doing all the work pulling you down. So no work there. You've got air doing all the work, giving you nice, soft landing. So really, I don't have to do much at all, do I? Make sure the check clears, right? The thing is, when we're doing a stunt, it's not daredevil stuff. It's science. When you do science, if you do the same procedures, you get the same results. So that means that they don't have to bring 24 cameras. They can bring one camera, because cameras and cameramen are expensive, and we can just do the stunt 24 times. 
which means we have to figure out 24 times how we're going to get a stunt person back up to the top of a skyscraper so they can jump again. How do you think we do that? Elevator, exactly, because that's the easiest way. And Einstein said when you're trying to solve a sol uh, science problem, the best answer is usually the easiest, the simplest answer. But we're not always filming where there's an elevator. We might have to get a stunt person up to the top of a cliff in the jungle. We might have to get them up from a deep crevice in a glacier. So we have to figure out some simple machines we can bring with us wherever we are that are going to help us lift people. I'm going to show you how this works here. I'm going to need a volunteer right here. I think you're the man for this job. Why do you think that? Because uh, so you got this funny underwear on. Here you go. Pull those up. Now, what Bob's actually got on here is a professional stunt harness. And this is actually the same harness that we put. I, I've, I've gotten a lot of use out of this harness. I used this harness on Tom Cruise. I used this wow. harness on Spider-Man. Pay for it once, earn with it forever, right? right. All right, so when we're lifting people up, we want to make sure that they don't fall, right? So that means we have to use materials that are strong. And you wouldn't just say, oh, I need something really strong, right? You won't get very paid, paid a lot for that. You have to say something like, I need a material with a high tensile strength. But it means the same thing. It just means something really strong. And the tensile strength of this material here, two-inch nylon webbing, 6,000 pounds. So even after a big breakfast, we're still pretty well within the safety limits there, right? All right, come on over here. I'm going to hook you up to this little contraption. When I was coming off the stage, you said, put on that harness that's on your Yeah, that was it. That's, that's the you plan. know, there's no reason to spend a lot of time worrying about things. Just more time for anxiety, right? So, yeah, now pulleys are definitely my favorite of the simple machines. So simple machines include wheels and axles, screws, wedges, levers, ramps, and pulleys. But I learned about pulleys in fourth grade. My teacher drew them on the blackboard and said, see, there you go. That proves using pulleys you could lift things that are heavier than you are. I was thinking all that proves is you can use chalk. But I was really curious about the idea. I went home, broke open my piggy bank, ran down to Home Depot, bought myself some pulleys, and I recreated the drawing that she had on the blackboard by putting some pulleys on a branch, putting some other pulleys down here, and then I ran in my house to look for something really heavy to lift. And the first thing I found was my mom. Yeah, and my mom was a great sport, and uh, she came outside. She let me hoist her up in there. And I've been pretty much using pulleys every day since then. Would you two gentlemen come up and help me for a second? And I need you guys too, right here. Because I want to explain to you how these things work. I want to make sure nobody gets too badly killed here. All right, one pulley changes the direction of the force of a rope. So with one pulley, if I pull down with 10 pounds of force, the other side goes up with 10 pounds of force, right? Just changes the direction. But if you add multiple pulleys, if you have several pulleys, what it does is it divides the load. And I don't mean that in a pejorative way. That's a physics term for the thing that you're lifting. Uh, it divides the load by the number of ropes that are holding it up. So if you want to know what the mechanical advantage is of using a pulley system, you just count how many ropes are holding up the thing you're lifting. So I've got nine ropes here. So that means if I had a 90-pound man here, then each rope only has to lift how many pounds? 90 divided by 9? 10 pounds. And since, since the pulleys allow the tension to be equal everywhere in the system, it would take only 10 pounds here to lift 90 pounds here. Think it works? I hope so. Only, only, only one way to know. So I'm going to take this carabiner here, clip it onto you, high tensile strength, and it locks. You know why we need to lock that? I want to make sure he doesn't try to run away, right? All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to gather around right here. Come on over here. This is like Jack and the Beanstalk. You're Jack. This is the Beanstalk. You're the giant. Come on over here. Come on over here. Right in here. Good. We want to pull straight down, right? We don't want to be over there pulling sideways and pull this whole thing over on you, right? Yeah. So come on over here. Put your hands around that. And we're just going to start to gently press down on that. Go ahead. We're just going to apply some tension to the system there. And we're going to see if the system is capable of creating some lift. And it looks like so far we're getting a little bit of lift there. What do you think? Going up. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just forgot something. Quick. Will you come help me? Quick, really. This, this is important. What's your name? Riley. Riley? OK, I just remembered. I said if we had a stunt person in the air, we have to have something nice and soft underneath them. Whoo! That was close. OK. Bob? I've got Riley underneath you. She's nice and soft. Anything happens, she's going to break your fall, all right? 
Now, Riley, be honest with you. You've got all the danger right now. <laughs> but, you know, I think that people who are willing to take a risk like that to be rewarded with some responsibility, what do you think? You know what responsibility is? It means if you're in charge of something, no matter what happens, it's on your head. <laughs> all right, so, gentlemen, I'm going to have you hold that for one. Don't let go yet. Ah. All right, Riley, can you hold that? And I'm going to have these guys let go of this. I'm going to get down right next to you. All right, guys, step right back over here, and we're going to see if Riley is able to hold this up. What grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to let go in three, two, one. Not too shabby, huh? This is not a blackboard trick, right? This is the real deal. There's a guy up here. Now, Riley, Riley has just proven two incredibly important science concepts. I want to see something else. Riley, step right over here. Put your pinky in there, just your pinky, <laughs> and we'll see what happens there. All right, you have just proven, Riley, first of all, that using simple machines like pulleys, a fourth grade girl can hold up a man who weighs enough to MC a room of over 650 people. <laughs> That's phenomenal. And you know what else you just proved, Riley? Riley just proved that a girl with one finger can easily do the work of any four men. <laughs> Good for you, darling. All right, should we get this guy down? All right, step out from underneath there. We'll see if we can get you safely back to Earth. Ready? Now, for extra credit, what do you think is happening to my hand right now? Ah! It's getting a burn because what? Yeah, the F word. We don't want that, right? We don't want any friction on us because friction causes heat and heat burns people. So we want to make sure we come down very slowly, hand over hand, get a nice, safe landing. Are you landing? Have you landed safely? I think so, yes. Great. You'll just sign this waiver right yeah, here. It's too late now. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks. Riley, gentlemen, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And thank you. Super deal. So that's how we fly. Uh, Tom Cruise, that's how we fly Spider-Man, all done just using pulleys. You know, my job is to take a script, something somebody imagined, and turn it into something you can point a camera at. So I take things that started in one person's imagination, and then I have to turn it into something that we can film so that you can all share the vision that was in the writer's mind. I still have to figure out how we're going to film it. So I'm going to show you how we would make, let's say, like a Disney movie, all right? So let's say we have a Disney movie and it's, it's starring the incredible Science and Engineering Festival Gorilla. Amazing. How are you, sir? Good. Good. I picked you because I know you have acting chops. All right. So be very quiet, all right, while he's walking here because I don't know how he is allowing the little kids. We don't want to startle him. So, you know, just for your safety, I think we should just probably put him right here behind the bars just for safety. Now. You can imagine probably that if you take a sweet animal like this and you stick him behind bars for a long time, how do you think he's going to respond? How will that affect his mood? If you get angry, right, and sad, mad, depressed, anxious, the, the whole litany, not a good thing. In fact, if he didn't have something to look forward to every day, I'm not sure he'd still be around. But you know what? Every morning at exactly 6.15, a lovely zookeeper comes, and she brings him his absolute favorite breakfast food. Do you know what that would be? Yes, it would. So she comes and she opens his cage. She goes in, asks him how he slept, gives him his banana, and then she remembers, oh my goodness, the other zookeeper's off today. I have to take care of the gazelles, the iguanas, the bats, the cockroaches. So you've got a lot to do, and every once in a while, you might not have actually experienced this, but you will. When you have so much to do, you actually, it's possible you could forget something you were supposed to do. You'll, when you get older, you'll, you'll see. So today, according to this script, what do you think she forgot to do? She forgot to lock the cage, right? This is pretty good news for you because you've been waiting, you know, years to get out here. And here you are armed with the mighty 357 Chiquita banana. <laughs> and you realized from having looked at a kid's science book that even though you lacked an opposable thumb, you could still make a pretty good wedge with your hands. And then if you smack this banana hard enough, you could probably get it to shoot out of the peel hard enough with sufficient velocity, that means fast enough, right, to hit the zookeeper in the back of her head right here and just knock her out for a couple of minutes while you escape. 
So now we understand the science of vectors, right? We apply some energy from this side, some energy from this side. The energy combines and moves forward. We get that. What we don't understand yet, science may one day yet explain, is that why the louder you growl, the faster you can get the banana to shoot. So if you go like, growl, boom, it falls on the ground, but roar, boom, it shoots really, really fast. So to make this movie more exciting, you're going to growl really loudly and then smack the banana to shoot it at her. Now, when you hear this growl, you're not just going to sit here, right? You do what any smart zookeeper would do. You're going to scream and run, all right? Okay. Like this. <laughs> you know, because you don't want the same thing to happen to you that happened to the last zookeeper, right? Okay. So, so let's take a look at what that would look like. Now, I told you we we're, gonna, we're making like a Disney movie. So two things I can promise you if you're working for Disney. One, nobody gets paid very much. Two, nobody actually gets shot. So you're running away. He goes to shoot you, but he misses. This is great. This means you'll be alive for the sequel. And instead, the banana hits into a flower pot, and the flower pot blows up as you're running right past it. It blows you up into the air, and then we break for a commercial. Good. And then we have to wait to see what happened. All right. So... We want you to do a good job here. No, not even that. Because you know what? If you, make, if you do a good job, you're going to make good money. Well, guess what? In this economy, good money isn't good money anymore. You have to make great money. So you have to do a great job. Okay. All right? So when he growls and you scream and you run, we want to see an amazing jump right here. Both hands up in the air. It'll magnify the effect of height. Okay? Because that's, that's a safer way to get you up for the stunt is for you to jump than if we actually put dynamite in here. All right, so if you're going to jump, though, please remember a couple of things. First of all, don't hit your head on the ceiling. Second of all, make sure you have someone who's talented and properly trained to catch you so you don't go through the other wall, all right? So I promised the convention center we wouldn't damage the walls. Would you help me for a second? Okay, awesome. All right, so you're just going to be right here. Yeah, and you're just the, the receiver right here, all right? You're going to make sure she doesn't go through. So when she comes and she jumps, ah, you'll catch her just like that, all right? All right. So when we want to do good work, we practice. We call it rehearsal. You guys probably call it homework. Same thing. We're just doing a new skill until we're good at it, all right? Okay. Quiet on the set. Rehearsal's up. And action, gorilla. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Good, all right. So the explosion's going to happen right here at the flower pot. They blow up. So that's got to be your last step right there. All right, I'm going to give you a mark. You, you know, you just jump how far you can. So you see that mark there? That's where your foot will touch. And then, boom, just jump up. She doesn't have to catch you. All right, so one more time. Ready? Quiet on the set. Rehearsal's up and action. Boom. I like it. I think we're ready, ready for picture. All right, so now we have to figure out how to get the flowers to blow up at the exact moment that you're running across them, right? So one way we could do it is I could just put a little bit of explosive in here, and then as you're running past, you know, I light it, boom, we're good to go, right? But then, what, you know what? I mean, what is the camera guy going to say? Hey, I'm ruining the shot. It's going to look like we're making a movie about a bald special effects coordinator who likes to torture flowers with a blowtorch, right? That's not a Disney movie. So we got to figure out another way to do this. And one of the things I realized is that when we say we're going to blow something up, it literally means <laughs> blow it up. It means that you're going to use air to push something up. So the question is just where we get the air from. Are we going to take air from an air compressor and release it? Are we going to create gases by burning an explosive that creates gas? And in this case, the easiest way to do it is I'm going to use this little device here called an air cannon, which I'm going to cheat it around so you can see it. So the air cannon is a metal tank, and inside it, I stuffed two or three billion air molecules using a little machine called a compressor. So right now in here, we've got billions of air molecules. You know what they're doing? They're bouncing up and down and back and front and sideways, bumping into each other, pressing up against the sides of the tank. What do you think we call all that pressing in different directions? Pressure, yep. Well, all that energy expended in a million different directions is not going to get any work done, right? This is like trying to do six subjects of homework all at the same time. The only way you get work done is you have to apply your energy in one direction at a time. And energy moving in one direction is called force. So what an air cannon does is it converts pressure into force. The more pressure you start with, 
the more force you get. If we had a microscope and we looked inside here, it would look like a classroom when the teacher leaves the room for a minute. A whole lot of activity, but no work getting done. All right, so we're going to pull this guy back here. Now, how do we get all the air out of this thing? We open a valve, right? And the valve that I'm using today is called the solenoid valve. That means instead of having to open it using a valve that I go by hand, I do it electrically. So that means that I'm going to have to make an electric what? An electric circuit, right? So that means I have to use some wires. Wires conduct electricity. When I touch these wires to the battery, one of these wires goes inside there and wraps around a piece of steel. And what happens when you wrap wire around a piece of metal and put a current in it? Magnet. It makes a magnet, right? So that magnet is actually what's going to open up the, the switch here. So as soon as I touch these wires here, all hell breaks loose. All right, so all we have to do is time out the science to go with the acting, and then that creates the illusion of the stunt and the special effect because special effects is really about safely using science to create the illusion of danger, not making real danger. All right? Back to one. You know what that means? Awesome. Mr. Gorilla, are you ready? Madam Zookeeper, are you ready? Stunt safety? Ready to go? All right. So the way it works, we let you know that this isn't the rehearsal, that this is the real deal. And we say, picture is up. And then we'll warn you that an explosion's coming up by saying, fire in the hole. And then you could cover your ears. And then we'll count three, two, one, action, gorilla. Growl, scream, run, jump, create an electric circuit, open a valve, release the pressure to create force, and catch. <laughs> Got it? All right, quiet on the set. Picture is up. Fire in the hole. Three, two, one. Action gorilla. <laughs> wow. Awesome job. Nice work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brilliant. Bob, amazing. Mr. Gorilla, some of the best growling I've seen. All right. Well, that in a... 30-minute nutshell is how we use uh, some pretty simple science to create some pretty exciting special effects. If you're interested in all of the science of how special effects are done, I've written this amazingly terrific, fun-to-read, highly illustrated, full-color, 192-page book called The Secret Science Behind Movie Stunts and Special Effects. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>